Okay, testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mother vs. Son podcast. I am the son. And I am the mother. And this is... I am Homestead Tessie. And I am from Scott from Scott's Honest Reviews. Today we have, this is going to be a standalone um, podcast. Basically, we're going to be answering a question someone had, and we want to take the time to answer it right. Someone had asked, what advice would you give an estranged grandma on kids, on husband, and grandbabies? So in other words, she is asking about estranged family members. In other words, family members that maybe don't want anything to do with you and that sort of question. That is a very serious question and I felt like that should be a standalone. Yes. Because we want to give it the time and the attention and the focus on that. Now I don't have all the answers but I've been through life for 53 years and so I do understand a lot of things and I'm going to share it with you my point of view. There is no right or wrong answer to this question and maybe you can take something that I said and it can help you. And I hope that you can. I'm also going to share with you a little story, a story that my father told me many years ago when he was still living. But we all have these relationships. I don't think it's just you. Everybody has a relationship where things maybe didn't go the way they thought and things maybe didn't turn out the way they did. Now, if you have a family member that is a daughter or someone really close to you like that, that is especially hard. I cannot imagine that if you would not want anything to do with me. Yeah. And you were my child and you grew up with me and I raised you. So there are different dynamics to this question. Yes, it's, it's a very in intricate web right. because there's, there's always two sides of everything. Right. And there's, so right. It's, it's hard to know, you know, the details of each person and right. what caused it. So, so we, we will give basically our best, <laughs> gen, not really generic, but our best answer with very limited information that we right. do know on the right. situation. Right. So this can happen and this can happen for many reasons. But one thing I want you to know is you need to pray about it. You need to seek the Lord about it. You need to find peace with it because peace that passes all understanding and that's what God is asking us to do is to pray for our loved ones. So if this was a child of yours that you raised and they've grown up with you, that is it's extremely hard, but we pray for them. If you know where this child lives and you have their address, you could send them a card once in a while. You could send them a letter, but do so in a non-threatening way. In other words, you could send them a card and just say that you're thinking of them or that you love them, not going into any kind of drama or say, where are you? Why are you talking to me? Just a generic, beautiful card that says, love mama or love mother or things like that. If you don't know where they live and they really cut themselves off with you, then all we have is prayer. And prayer can really change our focus. We pray for our loved ones and we pray for those that persecute us. So I do understand a little bit because there are some situations in my life where I did walk away from certain things. And it was not easy but it was what was best for me mentally and emotionally. And I pray for these people every day. And I think about them every day. And I want to tell you one quick story. Because this has really to do with it. This type of question. And this is a true story. And it is a story about a father and his son. Now, I don't know these people. But the story was given to me by my father who I think he probably did know these people, he just always told the story. There was a father and the son, and they did not get along. In fact, they did not have any type of relationship whatsoever. The father prayed for the son every day. As the father got older, he prayed for the son to be saved. The son didn't want anything to do with him, but the father prayed every day. He prayed every day for 50 years, and nothing came out of it. The son was still living his life, didn't want nothing to do with his father. But 
the father kept praying and he felt like God was going to answer his prayer. Do you know this story? I used to I say not, to all of you. It sounds familiar of a Bible story. But. I used to say it to you all the time. The father passed away. And at his funeral, the son gave his life to Christ. And that son not only gave his life to Christ. He became a preacher. Yes. Yeah. That does ring a bell now. And he became a preacher. And he is preaching the gospel of Jesus throughout the world. And I'm not sure if he still is. I don't know how no, old that, the story that is. No, that is real. I heard... Uh, no, My dad always told me the story. No, I actually heard someone tell the story someone else on YouTube. Okay. And they said and they said that pastor was me. Or they said okay. that person was me. Well, if Scotty can find out, maybe he could share a link to it. Yeah. But the moral of the story is, my dad always told me that story. And the moral of the story is, never give up your faith. Never give up praying for people. And never give up in showing love. And I always say this, as a really sensitive person. And I always felt so rejected by people. Is, you can still show your love to someone in a very non threatening way. Just a letter saying, I love you. I'm your mother. I will always love you. And keep it at that. And that has really been a challenge because so many times we get so frustrated that we just throw up our hands and say, oh, well, forget it. But we can still show love yeah. and just no other condemnation or nothing, but just show love. We are to love the sinner, but hate the sin. So if your child is living um, not get, not with God's principles. We love that child. If that child has gone astray, that child has a life that's not biblical or Christian, we still love that child. That love for our child never changes. We just pray for them that God would make a difference in their life and God would transform their life. Yes, and so my take could be a little different. I agree to everything of that, but you know, coming from a younger person's standpoint on this subject I when she was saying what I was writing down because I, <laughs> I forget things very quickly so when I have a thought so that reminds me of it you know if you believe in God or not you know it depends on who you are there is the verse that when you're going to the tabernacle or when you're going to give your sacrifice to the Lord if you remember that you have a strife or a problem or something with your brother or with somebody, you are supposed to leave your sacrifice, your gift offering at the door and go make amends with your brother, with your sister, with whoever before you, you know, you give to the Lord because that's more important to the Lord. So you have to kind of take it as what's more important, the pride of what they may have done to you or may have not done to you or you have done to them it does in the big picture it doesn't matter if you do something to someone or they do it to you in the end we both we all have a choice to forgive forget move on or we have the choice to say you know what they did this to me right. or you know I, I and so they should be the one to apologize to me but in the kingdom of God both are equal. It doesn't matter if, you know, it, it doesn't right. matter what your what they do to you because right. look at what we did to Christ. Right. I mean, right. And, and he right. still we said, don't know Father, what forgive she's, them. Right. We don't know what she's, we don't know if she has better, you know, we, we're just yes. going by the questions. Yes. Clearly, we don't know now, anything of the situation. Yes. So. And now, if you can flip it, if you did something to somebody and you're like, well, if there's nothing I can do. Well, the best steps to fix something that you do to someone is little steps. So, it's, it's, I think it's easier to fix something if it's in your own relationship, if you're still married, if you're still together. Right. Because you can make steps of, okay, they have this interest, I think it's stupid, this hobby is really dumb, or what they do is really dumb, or all they want to do is be on their phone or go out in the woods or whatever. <laughs> well, you know what? You can get on your phone as well and right. do the things that they, you know they like. You might think it's the dumbest thing in the world. You might think fishing is stupid. Right. They, all they do is fish. Learn about fishing. Right. Get interested in fishing and be like, oh, hey, honey, I got you this fly wheel or I got you this right. lure. And then they're like, okay. You know, first, first five, ten times you do something out of the ordinary right. that... 
they like, they're going to shrug it off or they're gonna, right. or they might be like, oh, thanks. Because they're, it's not genuine, you know, right. it has to build. Because, and then if you give something and then they're like, oh, well, thank you. Or, oh, okay, whatever. Right. You don't and then you get, overnight. yes, and then you get mad right. or you get upset and be like, I did this. I'm yeah. trying to show interest. Yeah. I'm trying to do this for you. And, and then you're it not comes seeing. about you. It's all about you. Then it's then. about you. Right. So I get it. You need to do things. You need to, and this goes for your grandkids, this goes for and everybody. That's if some, it's, and that's, like you said, it's easier if somebody's still living with you. Yes. Now, estranged, to, to me, would feel like... It means that, that they, they're not, they, they, they cut, don't have anything to cut they, ties they with They cut you. ties with you. And I will say this in this situation, because I, Scott did do something for me. So there was a situation that I had, oh, I, maybe it's close to a year ago, where there was a situation where I did apologize to somebody because we had a difference of agreement. And I did everything I could do, and I just wanted to walk away from it. And then he was the me medium. He kind of, in the medium, he said, you know, my mother, you know, says she loves you. She has nothing against you. She but, doesn't, but sh we're so, going to choose this route. So sometimes and, it, it, it... And sometimes they don't want to hear it. Right. So, so it doesn't matter. Right. So sometimes you have to understand everybody is in their walk, and Paul right. said it perfectly. I... I often do what I don't want to do, right. but and I often do the things that I do not want to do right. because flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. We have to understand we're all human. We're all, you know, we're all going to make mistakes. Right. You can't expect someone to forgive you if they don't want to forgive you. Right. You can't force that. You can only make steps. Something going on out there. Oh my word. Oh, you have Signs. good ears. You have good ears. Yeah. You can only do what you can do. You can't. And you cannot do something thinking, well, I did all this and they still haven't forgiven me. You can't do and it. And that's where discernment is. So yeah, this you, would you be, can't. I think this would be our answer. Just pray and ask the Lord for discernment, what you should do. Yes. And he will tell you in that small, still voice, hey, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. Or maybe he'll just be, say, just let it rest and let it go. For me, it's hard to let things go. And Scott knows that because I'm always over explaining well, yeah, myself. Yes. And finally, I got to the point where. I had to let it go and let him be the media, just do mediation and say, because then, because I over well, yeah. I could spend an hour like, well, I meant this or I meant that. And the thing is, everybody's going to, everyone's going to take something you say yeah, differently yeah. and you can't expect them to take it the way that you mean it. Right. You can, Like, here's something that we all, we all have to learn. When you say something and someone takes it the wrong way, you can't expect them to take it the way that you mean right. because we all perceive things differently. Right. So you have to be very understanding. And the, the best thing is you have to be meek. Right. You have to be weak right. in, in the eyes of the world. That, I think that has to do with the, you know, the meek will inherit the earth. I think it doesn't mean, oh, you're, you're weak and you know, you get, you let, people, you let people run you over. Right. I think that means no, you choose to humble yourself. You right, choose. Right. So, I mean, to continue with that question, you know, a little more, you know. It just a lot depends on the circumstances. When, when, it, comes, when it comes to kids, because I want to answer it specifically now. When it comes to kids, kids are kids. Okay. I was bad. I was good. I was naughty. I was, you know. Kids are kids, so it depends on the age. Right. If you're talking about older kids, like, moved out of the house, well, that's because they grew up and they saw a side of you that, that they didn't, it didn't appeal to them, that they, something that they didn't approve of or something that they felt hurt from. So that's going to take many, many years of fixing. And some kids are, but Scott, some kids well, yeah. are extremely um, yes. immature. Yes. So, you know, that's, there's some kids in certain ages where, the mom and the dad are, they don't... Well, there's... You that's, very, that's very tough because some kids are very bad and some kids... Well, yeah, right. Kids, so, really... So you can't... It's, you know what? When it comes down to it, though, no matter what circumstance, because we are both Christians, we will tell you this, that it's best to pray about your situation well, yes, you, and yeah. ask for guidance from the Lord. Yes. And He will give you the spirit and, of calmness and help you with and that. I will say this, don't try and live your life through your kids. Don't 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 try and change them how you were brought up. Be, like I'm talking about older, I'm talking about kids that are out of the house that are adults. You mean you're not going to be like me? No, what I'm saying is you need to let them learn 
You need to let them fall. You need to let them have their mistakes. You need to, and then you need to be there to catch them when they fall. Right. In other that, words, I can't not, say, Scott, you got to do this. You got to well, do that. Well, if you you, you got to get your oil lamps. Come on. You got to be like you know, me. If, if you see them stumbling, if you think they're you have wasting to love their, them through it. Yes. If you see them stumbling, you have to be like, please, please don't do this. I I don't want you to do this. You know, you're making a mistake. But after you realize you, you made this mistake, I'm going to be here. I'm going to support you, you because that's what love does. That's what right. our father does for us. Right. You just have to mirror what we are received from our father. Yeah. That's it. And that that actually answers everything. Just right. mirror. mirror. I mean, how many times do we upset the Lord? 70 times 70. Right. And how many times <laughs> has he rejected us? He Never. doesn't. He doesn't. Right. So he loves us through it. He does. Very he, good. He gives us that's, so many. That's a good. Yeah. Yep. I mean, so... With that, wrapping it up, yep. I mean, just you know, with your husband, again. Same thing, though, really. How many times? Same thing, but show interest. Right. And when, and when they don't accept it, just keep slowly showing interest. Right. You can't, you know, I think, you know, this is coming from a young standpoint of a marriage. You know, I, th I think you have to, well, you have to realize that, doesn't matter who's right or wrong, because ultimately, in the end, God wants you to... Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Yes, but that's hard to say. I mean, I can't... Maybe that's in the Bible, though. Yes, and I don't know how many people can actually do that. I know, you know, my wife and I are finally at a good point. I don't think I've but... ever gone to bed maybe once or twice angry. Yeah. At my husband or anybody I knew. I mean, Well, there's... The, lo <laughs> the longer you hold on bitterness the worse it turns and then you turn into a person that is but then miserable. Again, some people that's easier than us. I'm a happy no. go lucky person, so it's hard for me yeah. to hold on to anger. But bitterness can affect some people their whole lives. Oh yeah, yeah. And well yeah, and also I guess you, I can relate to this a little bit because this person could be feeling this. They could be feeling like they're worthless. They made a mistake. They can't go back and fix that's it. Right, true. So what's their point? You know, why why even try? I've been there right. in situations. I made peace with situations. You know, we can always go back right. and say, I wish I would have done this differently. But if we do things differently, that you know, who's to say it wouldn't have turned out worse or better or right, whatever. Right. So in the end, when it comes down to it, show interest. Forgiveness. Slow interest. And I'm not talking, you know, if they like... If you have kids, younger kids, right? You want to, to slowly. Yes, yeah, so if you have kids and they love Backstreet Boys, I'm just and as an example, don't go out and spend five thousand dollars on front row tickets for Backstreet Boys. <laughs> In other words, don't buy their love. Yes, because then then they'll be like, oh, so anytime we're mad, I'll just simply I'll get something big from it. Start out small and don't expect anything in return right right oh, that's another do one. not expect anything in return if, if you were doing something let's say you do things five things and then you start feeling well you know what's the point in this well then somewhere in your heart you're expecting something right your expectation should be don't expect anything but give your everything there you go that's right so good. and that is, is our answer to that question that is that and this, this is going to be a whole video because right. it's a uh, detailed right and again you, this is our perspective. Right. We don't know there, everything. We, we don't even know anything of the story, so no, we don't know anything. We, we, we so. don't know if if they did something wrong or, or you know, if it was, it was like abuse or, or if, if it was mutual. Right. We yes, don't know or anything. If it was just but a, we're just giving our thoughts. Yes. Our thoughts and everybody has their opinion. And That's what this is about. It's a podcast. Yes, it's our podcast, and he agrees with me sometimes, and I don't agree. With, you know, it's that's. Oh well, yeah. So, with that being said. People can leave a comment under this video. You guys have questions you want us to Hey, that's a good on. idea. Maybe you went through the same situation yes, where you were estranged from somebody in your family and you made amends or it, something, or you're not made amends and you want comfort. We want you to talk with one another about this. Yes. In the comment section, the whole point of a comment section is community. And the right. whole point of community is to... You know, lean on the people, ask right. questions with people, and engage with people. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. So if someone says something, you're like, well, I completely disagree. It's okay to agree or if disagree. It's civil. If, if it's, it's civil, civil and respectful, we keep it. Only yes. way if we don't, if they are de derogatory towards someone else. Yeah, then so, it's, yeah. If, right. if, if, it doesn't, if it does no building, right. there's no point in saying something. So if you're going to say something that doesn't build someone up, right. now some people can, you know, you can say something harsh, but it's, it's the reality. Right. 
you were hurt or I was hurt. Because we all yeah, say... Yeah, but not like anything where I... I'm a, you I'm have to say, though, no, I am a peacemaker. Whenever there yes. was any kind of situation, who was the one that was like, just yes. do this, just do this, yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a peacemaker. Yeah. I don't like con conflict. I'm a I'm a warrior peacemaker. Okay, well, I'm so not. If, if I, I am more... I can, I, I I can make peace, better. but I can go to war. Yeah, well, I am but starting I, to have a voice a little more. Yeah. That We, we yeah. missed that up when the other... We had a video about yes. that, but well, that, let's not let's not flashback. <laughs> we forgot. We I'm going to start having a PTSD about my my audio mess up. <laughs> I've that's why I've gone off camera a couple times here. I've <laughs> double checked it, and I hope you're still recording. Okay, you didn't you didn't go off camera because you were that upset with me, right? No. <laughs> this podcast ends today. Bye. <laughs> oh, we're leaving. I'm just checking. Okay, just I thought you're leaving. Okay, we are leaving. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you guys have any questions and you want answered. You gotta leave a comment. That's right. Don't forget to follow Homestead Tessie on YouTube and Scott's Honest Reviews. Mm -hmm.